All right, hey everyone. Um, so today I wanna to take a look at some of the SAT questions that use the back solving method. Uh, again, just a reminder, the back solving method is where you're gonna use your answer choices to try to help you solve the problem. So let's start with the non-calculator questions here. So question number five, um, this I believe is from the first test. These are from tests either one or two. Uh, it says if K is greater than zero and X equals seven, in the equation above, what's the value of k? Okay, well first they told us that x was equal to seven. So we might as well go ahead and put that into our equation. So we have two k squared plus 17 minus seven equals zero. And now to use this method, all we're gonna do is the question says, what is the value of k? That means one of these answers has to be what k is. So you can literally just go ahead, use those answers and try substituting them in for K to see if they work. So let's go ahead and do that here. Uh, I'll start somewhere in the middle with either B or C. Why don't we go B? And if I did this out, we'd get two times three squared plus 17 minus seven. We're gonna check, does that equal zero? Well, three squared would be nine. So we have two times nine plus 17 under the square root here, which would be 18 plus 17, uh, which is gonna give us a square root of 35 minus seven, and that does not equal zero. All right, so we'll try that again here. That does not work. Why don't we go ahead and do out four? So if I went through four here, we get the square root of two times four squared plus 17 minus seven, and we wanna know if that equals zero. And what we get here, two times 16 plus 17, all of that under the square root, minus seven, does that equal zero? Two times 16 is 32, so we have 32 plus 17 minus seven. Square 32 plus 17, that's gonna give us a square root of 49, minus seven, does that equal zero? And surely enough, square root of 49 is seven, seven minus seven is zero. So we have our answer here. All right, let's take a look at another example here. Again, this is gonna be the non-calculator section. So we're given this problem and it says, the measure A in degrees of an exterior angle of a regular polygon is related to the number of sides N of the polygon by the formula above. If the measure of an exterior angle of a regular polygon is greater than 50 degrees, what is the greatest number of sides it can have? Okay, there's a lot to break down here. But when you're gonna use this back solving method, really make sure you find the question. What is the greatest number of sides it can have? All right, well that means one of these has to be the greatest number of sides that our polygon here can have. So since we're looking for what the greatest number of sides could be, I always say start with the greatest answer for this situation. So. Let's say the number of sides was eight. Now again, the number of sides is the letter N. So what I'm saying here is that N is eight. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sub that back into my equation here. So we'll get eight times A equals 360. Well, to solve for A here, I would simply divide by eight. Okay, so A. Now 360 divided by eight, I happen to know that that's 45 right off the top of my head. If you don't know that though, um, you could quickly do that out by some long division here. You could say, okay, well, eight goes into 32, uh, eight goes into 36 four times, which is 32. Subtract that, you get four, bring down our zero, eight goes into 45 times. But 45 degrees, is that greater than 50? Well, clearly it's not. So that's gonna be out. So then I would try the next greatest one. I'd say, okay, well, let's say we had seven sides here. So now we're gonna use N as seven. Okay, again, we take that, we sub that back into the equation. So we get seven times A equals 360. It means to solve for A, the angle there, I'm gonna divide by seven. And again, if we set this up, 360 divided by seven, well, seven goes into 36, that'd be, um, five times, which would be 35 minus one, zero. And here, seven goes into 10 once, seven minus, we get three, which is our remainder. So you could see that this is already above 
50 degrees. So I don't even have to worry about the remainder or getting the exact answer here. The answer is going to be n is 7 because that's the greatest number of sides it can have while the angle is still greater than 50. Okay, um, one more non-calculator question here. Uh, question number nine. It says, what is the solution x, y to the system of equations above? All right, so you're gonna see a lot of systems questions on this test. And for a bunch of them, you're gonna be able to use this back solving method. What they're saying here is, what's the solution? So which x and y value works for both those equations? So that means one of these has to be the answer. Now, if you are gonna go ahead and use this back solving method for a question like this, what I recommend is always start with the second equation, unless the top one's really easy, uh, only because on this test, most of the time, they're gonna make the top equation work for the majority of those answer choices. So you're gonna spend a lot of time checking those answers. By starting with the bottom equation, we can quickly narrow down our answer choices a lot faster. So for example, if I started with choice C here, I can just go ahead into that bottom equation and see if this works. So I'd get two times Y, remember these are X and Y values. So that'd be two times negative six minus four. We wanna see, does that equal negative 19? Okay, well here this would be negative 12 minus four, which is not equal to negative 19, so I can rule that out very quickly. All right, um, why don't I go to B next here? Uh, why don't I use a different color? So B, if I went into that second equation, we get two times negative eight minus three, does that equal negative 19? Well, that'd be negative 16 minus three, which does equal negative 19. So it works for the bottom equation. So now I can go and check the top equation, see if it works for that one as well. So here we get three times X, so three times three plus four times that negative eight. We wanna check, does that equal negative 23? And here we'd get nine plus negative 32, and we can see that negative 23 does equal negative 23. So choice B worked for both answer choices. There's our correct answer right there. All right. Let's go check out some calculator questions. Um, even though this is a calculator question, I don't think you need the calculator for this one. So it says, for what value of n is the absolute value of n minus one plus one equal to zero? Okay, for what value of n? Here's your possible values for n. All you literally need to do is test them out. So if I said, okay, n is zero, and I put that in, zero minus one in the absolute value, plus one, does that equal zero? Well, here we get zero minus one would be negative one, so the absolute value of negative one plus one. Absolute value of negative one, if you don't remember absolute value, always just makes positive, so that'd be like one plus one equaling zero, but that's not true. So that's out. If I put in one, one minus one is zero, and zero plus one would be one, that's out. If I go to C there, two, two minus one is one, absolute value of one is still one, one plus one is two, that would be out. There is no such value, and that makes sense. Absolute value makes a number always positive. You can't take a positive and add another positive number and get e equal to zero. That just can't happen. Okay, so very simple there. Just go ahead and use your answer choices. Um, number 19 here, we're gonna have another system question. But again, we're gonna back solve this rather than write out the system of equations. So let's take a look here. It says a food truck sells salads for $6.50 each and drinks for $2 each. The food's truck revenue from selling a total of 209 salads and drinks in one day was $836.50. Again, identify the question. How many salads were sold that day? All right. So here's the possible number of salads sold on this day. Now again, I like to start somewhere in the middle. I usually start with B or C, unless we have that max or min restriction. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with choice C. Let's say there was 99 salads, all right? Well, we know that salads 
sell for 650 each. So if I have 99 of them, and since in the calculator section, we might as well use our calculator here. If I can pull this up. Okay, so let's turn that on. And we're gonna do 99 salads at 650 each. That would be a total of 64350. Uh, 64.350. Okay. And now I'm also gonna look and I'm say, okay, well, I know I had 209 salads and drinks combined. So if I have 99 salads, we could simply just go ahead and say, okay, well, 209 minus the 99 salads means I'm left with 110 drinks. So if I had 110 drinks, and we know that drinks are $2 each, well, that would be $220. So if I took those two and add them together, the 64350 plus that 220, you could see here that gives us 86350. Now I wanted to do this out because a lot of people make this mistake on the test. They use the exact same numbers as the answer, but the six and the three are flipped here. Don't get confused, that is not the same answer. This is too much here, okay? We need to get our price lower which means we want uh, less of the more expensive item, which means we want less salads here. So let's try this same scenario out, but now with 93 salads. Okay, so if we had 93 salads at 650 each, that would give us a total of 60450. And then again, we know that there was 209 uh, salads and drinks combined. So if I take away those 93 salads, that means there had to be 116 drinks. And if those are $2 each year, that would leave me with $232 for those drinks. So you could see if I add those together, that's gonna give me that 836.50, which is the exact number we wanted to get here, which means 93 must be the correct answer. All right, last one I wanted to go through here, another system question where you could set up a system of equations. Um, a lot of people will mess up how this system is written though, which is why I kind of like to use the backsolving method a little bit better here. But let's take a look at this one. It says, uh, Katarina is a botanist studying the production of pears by two types of pear trees. She noticed that type A produced 20% more pears than type B uh, did. So based on uh, her observations, if the type A trees produced 144 pears, how many pears did the type B trees produce? Okay, so again, we're gonna find our question here, and it's how many pears did type B produce? Okay, so these are the possible amount of pears that um, B produced. All right, well, let's go ahead and try this out. Let's say B produced 124 pairs, okay? Well, she noticed that A, type A, produced 20% more than type B did, okay? So we're gonna take 20% more. Now there's a few ways you could do this. Um, I'm gonna show you what most students will do when they're doing this out. So most students, they'll take 20% of that, so they'll multiply it by um, 0.2 or 20 over 100. Either way is fine, they're the same thing. And they'll get 24.8, that would be 20%. But since it's 20% more, we have to add that to the 124 that we had there. So plus the 124, which means A would have produced 148.8. But that's not what A produced. A produced 144. So that tells me that answer choice is wrong. Now, I know somebody's gonna leave this in the comments, so I'm just gonna say it right now. Yes, you could have gotten the same thing by taking 124 and multiplying it by 1.2 right off the bat, because that would be a 20% increase or 20% more than 100%. So that's fine if you wanna do it that way as well. Okay, but again, we know that that's too high, so we need to lower our amount here. So why don't we try out choice B, let's say, um, Pair, uh, type B produced 120 pairs. So again, let's do 20% more than that. So if I took 120, 20% of that would be 24. Add that to the 120 there, and you'll see that you'll get that 144, 
which is what we wanted here. So I know that choice B is correct. Again, you would have gotten the same thing if you took that 120 times 1.2. That would also give you the 144 there. All right, so hope this helps with the, the back solving method. It helps you with your test when you go ahead and take it. Make sure you take advantage of using your answer choices. Look at our other videos. Make sure you looked at the substitution method. That's also very helpful for this test. And um, good luck, guys. If you have any questions or comments, make sure you leave them below.